Hello everybody and welcome back to another video by Funlearn Tutorials. In today's video, we will be understanding the story behind the Jones 1965 model. So essentially, we'll be continuing with Jones 1965 model. And uh, essentially, we'll be moving towards how to build the equational structure of the said model. Now, in order to understand how to build the equational structure, we have to first understand the essentially uh, how the economy works under the Jones 1965 model. If we understand what are the sectors and what are the factors that are being used in this model, then we'll be able to convert that concept into our own model and we'll be able to frame the structure from that. So we don't need to learn the formulae. Now, let us first understand what are the sectors of the economy. So here we assume that there are two sectors of the economy. Let's suppose one is the agricultural sector and the other is the manufacturing sector. So here we have assumed two sectors of the economy. Now, what are the specialities of these two sectors? So let me explain. In these two sectors of the economy, what we find is this is said to be an exportable, econ exportable sector. So what do we mean by that? The goods produced in this exportable sector, that is in the agricultural sector, is exported to the rest of the world. So the output is exported to the rest of the world. Here I am uh, calling ROW as rest of the world. Now, then what is the speciality of this sector? This sector is said to be import competing sector. So in short, I am calling it IC. So it's called the import competing sector. Essentially, we can understand this by thinking that the products from the agricultural sector are sent to the rest of the world, but the products of the manufacturing sector are not sent to the rest of the world. They are in, in essentially drawn back into the economy itself. So why am I calling it the import competing sector? Essentially, the people who will buy the manufacturing products in this economy, that is in the home economy, they can either buy it from domestic producers or they can buy it from the rest of the world. So the product of the manufacturing sector is competing with the imports. That is why the manufacturing sector is called the import competing sector. It is competing with the imports from the rest of the world. Imports means the goods that are being bought out from the rest of the world and exports mean we are sending the uh, outputs to the rest of the world so we are selling them to the rest of the world in case of agricultural sector and in case of manufacturing sector we are buying it from the rest of the world or we can actually produce it from within the economy as well hence import competing sector now these are the two sectors so if i want to make these two products then i will have to need some factors to make these products i'll need some inputs here we assume that the economy has two inputs that they can choose from they don't choose they essentially use these two inputs one is labor and the other is capital here i'm denoting l as labor and k as capital so essentially agricultural sector uses some amount of labor and some amount of capital from the total essentially i can call this as l bar and i can call this k bar so part of the labor is used in the agricultural sector and the rest of the labor goes into the manufacturing sector similarly part of the capital total capital endowment we call this the endowment the entire capital that the economy has is called the capital endowment and the entire labor force that it can also be thought of as the population of the economy this labor the total labor that the economy has at hand is called the endowment of the economy let me just write that down for uh, terminology endowment of an economy so we have two types of endowments we have the labor endowment which is denoted by l bar and we have the capital endowment which is denoted by k bar now these two endowments are distributed within the agricultural sector and the manufacturing sector we here we assume we th there is a, an assumption that we had made in the previous video here we assume that there is full employment of the factors now what is the significance of this assumption this is a very particular assumption in this model essentially we mean 
if some amount of labor is used in the agricultural sector the rest of it will be completely used by manufacturing sector and there is no surplus labor left in the economy which is unemployed so if you are a labor in this economy you will either be in the agricultural sector or in the manufacturing sector since there is full employment for both the factors there is no other place where you can be you cannot be left unemployed the same goes for the capital sector you have to be employed either in the agricultural sector or in the manufacturing sector you cannot remain unemployed as a capital or as a labor factor so that is essentially the basic structure of the economy now what we do is we essentially think of it in the mathematical form and we try to formulate the equational structure of the model which will allow us to find out different unknowns from the economy here again we assume certain uh, assumptions based on which we can solve the equational structure which will be explained in the next video